The Department of Transport has uh, been running campaigns year in and year out, but the nation keeps on losing lives. In recent events that have kept South Africa talking, now we of course have the loss of our Minister Collins Shabani and his two bodyguards uh, in a car accident over the weekend. Joining us from our parliamentary studio in Cape Town is uh, our Transport Minister, Dupio Peters. Uh, Minister, it, it's good to have you on the program. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Leanne, and the viewers of Morning Life. And of course, um, please accept our condolences for your colleague and um, I imagine a good friend of yours as well, um, on Minister Shabani. I'm, I'm sure that all of you are still, still in shock after the news over the weekend. Thank you very much, Leanne. I just want to also use this platform to convey my own personal and that of my department condolences to the families in particular the family of Minister Shabani and uh, Sergeant Sekela and Lenzwani. You know, every day on South African roads, we lose lives. And we know definitely that it is through these processes that we are also correcting and uh, improving the legislation, but also areas of the in environment, including engineering on our roads to make sure that we can save the lives of South Africans. All right, thank you very much, Minister. Now, the department keeps on running many campaigns on drinking and driving, but it still seems like people are just not getting the message. You know, it, it almost feels like you cannot possibly bring in more laws, um, even though there is a pending law to bring um, the drinking levels down now to absolutely zero, that you cannot, if you're going to drive, you cannot have one single drop of alcohol. Um, but having said that, what is the problem in the psyche of South Africans that we just don't seem to obey these rules? You know, one thing that I want to indicate to South Africans is that road safety is an intersectoral and multi-stakeholder initiative. In fact, as we speak, we are in partnership with the Ministry of Health to make sure that we can deal with the challenges of drinking and driving and making sure that we can always get a conviction out of the processes of law enforcement that we have on the road. We're also engaging with the Ministry of Justice to make sure that stiffer penalties are actually uh, uh, given to perpetrators or to the people who actually create these crashes. You would know that we once actually said we need to change our regulations to get people who cause the uh, uh, crashes to be charged with murder as opposed to a culpable homicide. Because it is important that we set an example. For example, this crash that happened over the weekend, you can actually see that there was no way in which a driver of a truck or any vehicle was going to be allowed to make a U-turn on that particular stretch of the road. So it means that over and above the substance that we have been informed the driver had used, there's also the issue of fatigue that might have set in because how can you turn on a road of that particular uh, uh, stretch. Yeah. And I, I, ju I just want to indicate that we are saying that from this crash, the investigators will indicate to us what happened yeah. and we are going to take lessons. But I would want to appeal to South Africans, government alone is not going to win this battle. It is individual drivers that are behind the steering wheels that are on the road. Transport is not supposed to be killing. Transport is supposed to get you to a point where you are supposed to either meet your loved ones, but not meet your creator or maker. Yeah. And I want me to believe that with the support of my colleagues in cabinet, we're working very hard to make sure that road safety becomes central. I also want to indicate that from the side of the ruling party, we've been engaging a lot with regard to road safety. Incidentally, yesterday, the Social Transformation Committee of the ANC was dealing with road safety. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, we're just going to take this, this accident as an example, and, and we're not going to speculate. As you say, we're going to leave it for the investigators. But just to talk around it has been um, that there's been talk that the truck driver may have been drinking at the time, that his license for that particular truck was expired and that it shouldn't have been on the road at that time. Uh, there was also talk of perhaps speeding at the time of this accident. I know that last year um, we saw that horrific crash involving a truck on the N12 in Benoni, and, and 
you, and you in fact called on labor unions within the transport sector to rise in defense of truck drivers um, not to drive these trucks and and to drive safely what's coming of that is that is is that initiative working and bearing any fruits because you know this is another incident of something like that one of the matters that we attended to we had a meeting with the freight industry we also had an opportunity as a transport department to engage the Ministry of Labor. Because you know the truck drivers are supposed to be on the road for about 15 hours. That is humanly impossible. And we also believe that it is the responsibility of the fleet owners to make sure that the vehicle that they give to the driver is in good condition. And also you would know that we've got uh, rules on the, the length as well as the type of reflectors that needs to be on vehicles and we are sure that out of the investigation they will also be able to indicate to us whether that vehicle overall overall above the the license was it also in a good condition because we believe that it is when the truck leaves the depot that the owner and the driver should be sure that it is it's in safe condition but also the owner of the fleet as the operator needs to make sure that the drivers are also adhering to, to the rules, like, for example, drinking and driving. Yeah. And we, we believe that that is one of the things that, to, together with our labor uh, colleagues, as well as uh, the other role players, we Four. need to be able to deal with it. But, Lian, not all crashes actually happened because of drinking. There's also fatigue. You would know that once you are exhausted, once you are tired, you are as equal to a drunk person. Once you are sleepy also on the road, your, your thinking capability has been altered. So I would believe that one of the key things is also to measure the, the exhaustion and tiredness of the drive, drivers. The 15 hours behind the steering wheels on, on the road is not something that we are going to tolerate in the ro on the roads of South Africa, especially with regard to truck drivers. Minister, one of the other issues, and I think a lot of people do talk about that, and again, I'm not paying any reference to what happened over the weekend, but let's, let's talk about the blue light brigades as well, because so many people are very, very concerned that they're above the law, that when they are speeding, um, they, you know, they, they cause accidents in themselves. Um, is there any legislation that governs these blue light brigades when it comes to speeding? I just want to indicate to you and to South Africans that protectors who are driving ministers and MECs in this country are taken through the necessary training. They are also registered and licensed drivers, and they are supposed to be adhering to the speed limits, adhering to the rules of the road. As as well as understanding how to maneuver the vehicle, because I would believe that the defensive driving that they have been taken through actually helps them to be able to respond to particular situations when it's raining, when there are obst obstructions and all those things on the, on the particular road. Mm. The blue light is an indication that this is a police vehicle. You would know that the drivers of these vehicles are themselves tr police, trained police officers. And it is from that angle that the blue light is actually being utilized. Yeah. So what you're saying is that under no circumstances um, should these blue lights be breaking the laws because there is a perception that they take advantage of their prioritized status, putting other road users at risk. Um, has the department looked into this? Because there have been many instances where these blue lights have actually themselves caused accidents due to speeding and bullying on roads. I would believe that if you've been bullied uh, by a blue light uh, a vehicle, you can report, and we have a number that we always put out to indicate that when you have been uh, offended by another motorist, you can report that particular behavior. But I would also indicate that the Minister of Police, who the, uh, the police officers that actually are protectors of ministers and MECs and other uh, eminent persons, are actually reporting to the Minister of Police. And from time to time, they are taken through even refresher courses to make it possible that they understand their responsibilities with regard to being on the road. Yeah. 
Minister, let's get back to the original um, question. Just right at the at, the, at the, the top of our interview, we spoke about the zero alcohol level. How far are we on that one? Is this going to be the future of driving here in South Africa? That if you are getting behind a, 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 um, a steering wheel of a vehicle, you must not have a single drop of alcohol in your system. I'm very happy that uh, the Minister of uh, Health is uh, our partner with regard to this particular initiative. In fact, whilst we are looking at the legislation, the Department of Health has improved and uh, increased their capacity to deal with alcohol uh, blood testing on the, the, uh, of the culprits of uh, road crashes, but also during uh, operations on the road. And I would want to thank him and uh, his team for that particular intervention. But also the protection of this, uh, the, the specimens or the samples that are picked up from the side of the road uh, to make sure that they reach the laboratory in a very safe and admissible condition. Yeah. That is also one of the areas that we are working on. You'd remember that we, we did indicate that we're going to be looking at what other countries are doing to make sure that we can reduce the sketch on our roads. I believe that zero tolerance to alcohol use should be our first step. The second step is monitoring exhaustion or the, 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 the driver behavior, because it is important that also I bring to the fore that we are going to be training an additional 1,000 traffic officers. We're also going to be retraining our traffic officers to be safety conscious as opposed to just looking at speed. Because okay. one of the things that we have picked up is that uh, the focus has been speed and there are other violations that have been uh, not taken up. Minister, thank you so very, very much for talking to us here on the program. And, uh, of course, good luck over this Easter season. And let's just hope that South Africans um, abide by the rules and take it easy on the roads as you go to your holiday destinations. That was the Minister of Transport, De Peters, speaking to us from our parliamentary studios in Cape.